The singer, HR, has had mental problems. And I'm not trying to be funny. He, he has tr true problems. Like, I don't know if it's schizophrenia or manic depression or, or whatever it is. But you don't know at this point when the band plays, you don't always know what's going to happen. The last time I had a rational conversation with HR was the summer of 1985. And so since then, you don't know what you're going to get. And Bad Brain shows, while they still tour, it's erratic because sometimes the singer doesn't feel like singing much. And on this day, I'm watching the Bad Brains in front of a packed house of people who were not alive the first time I saw them. I'm right over there on stage, left, you're right. And the three band, the three players hop on stage, uh, Gary, Earl, and Daryl. And HR walks on last. Uh, the band is on tour. He brings on stage his suitcases. He walks on stage with his luggage and puts it down on stage. I went, oh, this isn't going to go well. Uh, before the show, when I was talking to him, I noticed that he was wearing a bulletproof vest. I'm like, really? And Ian asked him, why are you wearing a bulletproof vest? And he said, it keeps me from falling apart, man. We're like, oh, no. no. And so the band starts playing the first song, and HR doesn't really feel the need to sing. He stands in front of the mic and just waves in the audience. <laughs> and everyone blows kisses and waves back because he doesn't like HR. And by the third song, he decides to sing a little bit. Mainly, he just does this. <coughs> so out of the 45-minute punk rock set, I think he sang about nine minutes of it. And then when he did choose to sing, he was fantastic, which means he still has the talent. He just doesn't always feel the need to sing often during the show. That he's <laughs> on stage for a part of it. And so it was kind of one of those sets where like, wow, I'm glad I got into this gig for free, because if I paid $18 for so that, I'd be pretty mad. <laughs> but no, the audience seemed to care. You know, this, maybe that's just a youthful attention span. You know, but back in my day, I would be giving them a, an F for effort. <laughs> and so the man walks off stage, and HR is the last to leave stage with his suitcases. He walks off the stage, he walks down the stairs, along that wall, and out the exit door. He leaves the building with his luggage. Who knows where he ended up? I do know that the Bad Brains had a show in Tel Aviv, Israel a week later, so maybe he was just getting there early. I don't know. He leaves, and there's like 900 kids who are about to find out there's not going to be an encore with HR. And so I'm standing there with the other three band members. <laughs> And they went, oh, no. I said, what are you going to do about that? I go, oh, we don't know. I said, you want me to go on stage and give them the bad news? They said, no, no, we'll do it. And someone from the band went on stage and said, HR left the building, man, the show's over. And the youth had an immediate reaction to this, and it lasted at least one and a half seconds. Bullshit! 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 And then everyone reaches into their pockets and goes back to their device. <laughs> Uh, of boredom that is my life. But once in a while I save my money and I vacate it, but I haven't changed the situation that makes me want to vacate it. And so I like to have a life that I never want to vacate. I don't want to kill myself, and I always want every day to be something I want to get up and get up for, and, and have a reason to get out of bed and go into the day. And some days are better than others, obviously. Some days, you know, are like pulling teeth. Other days, not so bad. But when I see that I have a lot of time where I don't have to be anywhere and do something, which is not very often, um, I like to leave America and go into the world, which is a fascinating place for me. And I, I, I'm Johnny Quest Jr. And so I see that I've got quite a bit of time before this tour starts. And this tour's going to go for quite a long time. So I figure, well, if you give me time, I disappear. And so uh, one evening as the season of this TV show is winding down, uh, I go on the internet because I'm curious as you are, and I see on the internet I see that there's going to be something interesting happening uh, in several weeks in of all places Bhopal, India, which is a city in India in the center of the country. And you remember in 1984 a thing called the Bhopal disaster, and that was at the Union Carbide.